Hello, and welcome to our Band in a Box video on part markers. Part markers are these colored boxes on the chord sheet that display a letter next to the bar number as seen here. A part marker can be used for a number of different things within Band in a Box, but the most common use would be to indicate a new part of the song. For example, an A or B section of the song, choruses, or breaks and interludes. These typically occur every eight bars or so, but may be placed at the beginning of any bar. This is great when you're using multi-styles that have several different substyles. Each band in a box style has an A and a B substyle, but a band in a box multi-style also has a C and D substyle, and may even have up to 24 substyles and can be selected by using part markers A through X. Most of the multi-styles that we've made have four substyles, conforming to the following pop song format. Substyle A is usually used for the verse of the song. Substyle B is usually used for the B section or the chorus and for soloing in the middle choruses. Substyle C is usually used for the intro or for an opening verse or a pre-verse. And substyle D is usually used for a break or an interlude. To add or remove a part marker, just move the highlight cell to the bar where you want to place the part marker. Then press the P key on your computer keyboard. Repeatedly pressing P scrolls through all available part markers. You can also simply position the mouse cursor directly over the bar number or an existing part marker, and then click the left mouse button. Repeat this procedure to scroll through the available options. You can also right click on the bar number or on a part marker to quickly select a substyle change or a groove variation. I currently have our Go Team multi-style demo song loaded. You can tell it is a multi-style by the plus symbol at the end of the style name. Let's give the song a quick listen so you can see how the part markers are working. You could clearly hear the song change at each of the part markers, even if it was just slightly. Part markers can also be placed to determine where drum fills will be played. A one bar drum fill will occur in the bar preceding the part marker. If you want a drum fill at bar 7 of the song, you insert a part marker at the bar after the bar with the drum fill. So in this case, that would be bar 8. You can either retain the original substyle or change the substyle when you place the part marker. So if you wanted the song to continue with the same substyle, but wanted a drum fill, we would just make sure that we had the same part marker as before. Let's take a quick listen. And as you heard, we had a drum fill at bar seven and then the song continued the same as it was before. Another great use for part markers is copying your chords. As you can see, we have some chords written in bars one through eight. Let's say we want to duplicate these bars, but we don't want to type them out again. We can just click and hold on the first part marker and drag and drop onto the bar we want to copy the chords to. And now we have duplicated our first eight bars. As you can see, Band in a Box has inserted an additional 8 bars to fit the bars we have copied. But if we didn't want to insert any new bars, we can just do the same process, but this time I will hold the control key. And now the copy chords and or melody dialog has opened where we have a number of options, such as the bar range we want to copy to and from, whether or not we would like to copy the chords as well as the bar settings, melody, soloist, and even lyrics. This option here that reads insert bars at destination will determine whether or not to insert new bars when copying as it did before or to just overwrite the current destination bars. We can also select to repeat the copy a number of times, transpose our copied bars and copy the first chorus to the whole song. So since I have the insert bars at destination option unchecked, if I just press OK, 
there were no additional bars inserted. Let's just delete most of these chords and put another part marker at bar 5 and do the same thing. I'll grab the part marker at bar 1 and drag it down to bar 9. But this time, it only copied the first 4 bars rather than the first 8. This is because Band in a Box will only copy the chords until the next part marker. So if I remove the part markers from bar 5 and 9 and repeat the process, Band in a Box then copied chords in bars 1 through 12. Thanks for watching our video on part markers. Have fun!